In this video, I will cover how to assemble gambrel style trusses using a template laid out on your shed floor like you see here. Let's begin with setting up corner stops. The first step in laying out a template is to nail scrap pieces of lumber to the corners of the shed. These act as stops for the lower rafter sections of the truss. I found this to be an effective method for building trusses that match the exact width of the shed, which is critical when you get ready to rest the truss on top of the wall. You don't want it to be off by even a sixteenth of an inch. Using the corners like this will guarantee a perfect fit every time. Recall from the previous video that the lower rafters are 47 inches and they are cut to a 22.5 degree angle. Also recall that the upper rafters are 58 inches long and the bottom end is cut to a 22.5 degree angle but the peak is cut to a 20 degree angle. Now notice the blue chalk line. It marks the exact center of the floor and serves as the center point for the truss template. If you've cut the correct length and angle, when you lay the lower and upper rafters in place, they should join at the peak like you see here. With your truss laid out, place blocks along the outer edge next to each joint. The truss parts will resist movement because of the angled cuts. So always position and fasten the outer edge blocks first. Afterwards, you can position blocks along the inner edge in a similar fashion. Here is the template with all of the outer blocks in place. Next, I'll add the inner blocks, but first I want to point out a few things about the corner portion of the template. Note that this angle has been cut to 22.5 degrees, which allows the tip to fit tight into the corner. All of the lower rafters are also cut to the same angle. The stop blocks nailed to the front and the side of the shed floor ensure the lower rafter tip sets flush with the outer edge of the floor. Doing so ensures the truss will set on top of the wall flush with the outer edge. These angles, like the corner angles, are cut to 22.5 degrees. The lower rafter is 47 inches from tip to tip and the upper rafter is 58 inches from tip to tip. I cut the lower rafters to 47 inches so that a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood when fastened will provide about a 3 quarter inch overhang to allow the drip edge to set properly. Now let's take a look at the peak. Two things to point out here. First, the peak angles are cut to 20 degrees. Second, where the upper rafters join must be centered on the chalk line. Doing this ensures a perfect ridge line for your roof. Now that we've covered the angle cuts, it's time to finish placing the inner stop blocks and cut all of the rafter pieces. Here I'm setting up to cut the lower rafters. When cutting angles it is best to use a miter saw that includes an automatic stop. Like my DeWalt saw which includes a stop at the 22.5 degree mark. With my angle set I make sure the crown is up and then place the board making sure that my blade lines up with the very tip to ensure the least amount of waste. Remember, we need to get two lower rafters from each 8 foot 2 by 4 so take care to line up and cut the very first angle. Before cutting the second angle, mark the length of the rafter, in my case 47 inches, and make sure you can clearly see the mark in order to line up the saw blade. Then to ensure the angle is facing the correct way, that is so it looks the same as the first angle, flip the board so that the first cut faces the saw. Then slide the board to the right until your mark appears. Look down along the blade and line up the right edge of the teeth so that you cut the very center of your pencil mark. When finished you'll have a lower rafter with a 22.5 degree angle. Use the same process for the upper rafter making sure to cut the peak at 20 degree angle. 